Today we are going to be talking about the new remote ID regulations that are going to be coming into force in the USA over the next 30 or so months. Now in this video I'm going to give you guys a complete overview of what remote ID is, how it will affect you as either a fixed wing user, a model RC user or a drone flyer, what you will need to do with your current models to be able to comply and how this could affect you in the future. Now just before we get into it if you find this video useful please do consider hitting that subscribe button the majority of people who watch this video are not subscribers of the channel I would really appreciate if you find it interesting to hit that button now what we're going to do is walk through a slide pack that I put together that should explain this all in a little bit more detail by the end of it you should have a good idea of what the situation is and what you need to do and then I'm also going to talk a bit about how these new regulations compare to other countries and some other things around it as well so the first thing we're going to do is jump over to the slide pack and talk about what the situation is and it is this that remote ID is coming and within the next two and a half years or 30 months you will be required to comply now there are two time scales at play here there is a time scale for manufacturers which is 18 months all aircraft made after 18 months must comply but people who fly existing aircraft have 30 months or you must be compliant by about the middle of 2023. Now they've announced the new remote ID regulations will affect all forms of model RC whether it be plane, drone, FPV. If the aircraft weighs over 0.55 pounds or 249 grams this will be a requirement. It is now going to be a broadcast ID element alone there is no network ID so the aircraft must transmit itself and we'll talk about that in a minute and there must be some specific hardware limitations for ready to fly aircraft compared to others and they have now added the ability for models to be retrofitted with ID which wasn't in the original MPRM and we'll talk about that in a bit more detail as well. For aircraft uh, for people who choose not to comply at the end of the transition transition period you will be limited to flying in very specific locations if your aircraft doesn't have remote ID and we'll talk about that a bit more as well. So the first thing is well what is broadcast remote ID? Well it is a system that will wirelessly transmit the remote ID information from the aircraft itself. It has to comply by transmitting on an open standard such as Wi-Fi or Bluetooth and it must be able to be picked up by any standard smart device. So this would be on either 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz just like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth and just like the current remote control standards. As I've said there is no network ID element of this right now so there is no SIM card required, no data charges, no fees. It is simply something that the aircraft aircraft must transmit just like your remote controller transmits the signal to the aircraft and your aircraft for instance say on a Mavic transmits the video back to the remote it's just like that. Now it falls under the ASTM standard and it must transmit some very specific info including the GPS location of the aircraft and the takeoff point or ground station position, the speed, the heading, the altitude, as well as the unique serial number. Now on the RTF models, it must be working at all times. And if there was a problem with the system on a ready to fly model, it sh must prevent the aircraft from taking off. But this isn't something that's a requirement for retrofit models. And we'll explain that a bit more in a minute. Now, if you are a current owner, you are probably wondering how this affects you. Well, as I've already said, you have 30 months to comply with this. It affects all recreational aircraft over 0.55 pounds. If you are under 0.55 pounds, remote ID is not required. However, there is a caveat for that for people who are flying 107, which I'll talk about at the end. They have announced in these new regulations that they will allow the ability for people to fit a remote ID module, making it possible for any aircraft to be compliant. Now, this module must be able to transmit the same information as the aircraft with it built in, including GPS speed, location, height and takeoff point. And the only real difference between an aircraft that has remote ID built in and an aircraft that transmits um, with a module is that the module one must transmit the takeoff point 
and the one with remote ID built in, say ready to fly, must transmit the pilot's current location. So there is some slight differences. Now, everyone will be required to comply with this and any model that doesn't means you are going to be restricted where you can fly as i have already said now many off-the-shelf drones today will have the ability of having this added via a firmware update model rc is a bit different and i'll talk about that in a minute but things like the mavic 2 pro the mavic mini pro and ready to fly models are all transmitting in these frequency bands already. DJI, for instance, are already transmitting their DJI remote ID for Aeroscope. There is technically no reason why many aircraft would not be able to receive an update to comply with this very soon. However, that doesn't mean all of them will, and it will be down to each manufacturer to decide what aircraft get a firmware update or whether they will even add it to previous aircraft and you might find that only the new ones, because remember, manufacturers have to comply in 18 months, will actually have this. However, technically, many ready-to-fly models would be able to comply. With regards to Model RC, such as fixed wings, planes, helicopter and FPV, though, you are going to need to fit a module. Now, this module will be a small device that collects the information and transmits it. It will need to be registered with the FAA via its unique serial number as part of your aircraft registration. And looking at it, I'm expecting it actually to be able to register one module with multiple aircraft, as you can currently register multiple aircraft under one registration. And again, I will mention that at the end of this as well. Something on my last video which was brought up a lot on this is we do self-build aircraft fall into this and the reality is it's exactly the same as everything else. This affects all aircraft over 0.55 pounds, whether you have built it yourself, whether it's a kit, a bind and fly, or it's a full ready to fly module from the likes of DJI, everything must be compliant. Now, talking about the remote ID device itself, well, it's going to be something that's going to need a number of sensors on board and a Wi-Fi transmitter, basically. It's going to need GPS, it's going to need an IMU to be able to detect when the aircraft has taken off, and it's going to need things like a barrow sensor or maybe even a compass to be able to tell which way it's facing. Very much, this is going to be a small flight controller that has a Wi-Fi transmitter built into it. Now, this module for remote ID retrofit is not required to be attached to your aircraft's flight controller. It can be completely standalone as long as it is able to provide all that information itself. I would expect modules for this to come in between 10 and 100 grams, maybe more depending on the size of the battery because you can build it with a battery built in. You might find some with external GPS antennas. You might have some with antennas built in. It's going to transmit on that 2.4 or 5.8 gigahertz. Reality is it's going to be 2.4 for the most part because there are some minimum distance requirements, which is around 400 meters. It's probably going to have a USB port, a built-in battery, and I'm expecting the cost of these to come in somewhere between 20 and 70 dollars depending on where you buy it and the manufacturer i do know there's going to be a large number of companies trying to get involved in this and we're going to see quite a lot of modules hit the market once this all comes into play now as i have said a few times there are some requirements on this that you must have remote id and if you don't you will be able to continue to fly however you will be restricted to only being able to fly in faa recognized identification areas this is the freers that was in the original mprm and legally if you don't have remote id and your aircraft is over 0.55 pounds you will be limited to flying visual line of sight in these locations so that is something to be aware of however no matter if it's an off-the-shelf model with remote id or a retrofit mo model with remote id you will be able to fly as you are now without any problems you just have to have that remote id so how will this affect future products? Well, from a ready-to-fly drone point of view, I'm not expecting it to add any cost or complexity to the system. They pretty much have this already. However, for things like bind and fly, you're probably going to see a price increase in this as they have to actually 
add this hardware into the system and anything from 20 to 100 dollars is what i'm going to expect to see on many bind and fly models with regards to kits and things like that most manufacturers will end up leaving that to you to choose your model id device rather than actually building one in we're also likely to see remote and goggle and fpv manufacturers try to integrate something as well into systems and there's going to be much more easier ways of complying in the future without having to have all that hassle and you're probably going to see things like receivers or ear units have the option to plug in your remote id module from the same company and just make life a little bit easier overall now as i mentioned at the start it is going to affect everything over 0.55 pounds, but there is a caveat to that, and that is 107 users. You are going to be required to use a remote ID even below that weight if you are using it for anything but recreational. So if you're a commercial pilot, you're doing drone work, even if it's a small model under 249 grams, you're still going to need that remote ID. Now, as I also mentioned, the FAA have said in the paperwork that they have kept the ability to register multiple models under one registration if they're used for recreation purposes and it looks as if from a, a um, retrofit point of view you should be able to have just one module to multiple aircraft and then have the ability to swap that module depending on which one you're flying however this isn't a hundred percent clear right now but it is how I'm reading the paperwork now that is the current basic situation and on a high level for users you have 30 months to comply if you don't comply you will be restricted to flying in freers that is the basics if you have an aircraft today that won't be able to get a firmware update to add it on you will be able to buy a module that you will be able to tape to the side that will allow you to be compliant for somewhere between 20 and 70 dollars as i'm expecting it now if i compare these regulations to other countries around the world they are very similar to what we've seen in europe and the uk and whilst we can all agree many of these regulations are not perfect it is a much better position than it was with the nprm the remote network id element has been dropped and the ability to retrofit has now been added because that wasn't even in the original nprm at all now if we do compare it say to the uk it is a little bit more restrictive because in the us you have to have remote id unless you're flying in a freer whereas in the uk you can actually continue to fly under a three category basically outside of congested areas without remote id on legacy aircraft so it is a little bit more restricting compared to other countries however it is certainly much better than it's been before now obviously this is somewhat of a controversial subject many people will agree with it many people won't the reality is it is coming but it is not tomorrow and you have plenty of time we're likely to see models from the likes of dji and others starting to hit the shelves probably end of this 2021 with the remote id because they'll want to get on board as quick as they can and then we're going to see the modules probably start to ship around the middle to the end of 2021 and over time you'll see more and more modules become available as well now that is it for this video if you found it useful as i already said at the start please do consider hitting that subscribe button in the comments tell me what you think about it please give me feedback on this video tell me what you think about the new regulations if you have any questions please put them in the comments of the video as well and i will try and answer them as soon as i possibly can that's it for this one thank you for watching if you're interested in seeing the whole thing on the NPRM, I had a similar slide pack on that and I will put a link to that video in the description of this one as well. It's a much bigger video and if you want to know where it's got from to where it is today, it's worth watching both videos.